Hello, how are you doing? My name is Ollie. I am uh, one of the fundraising managers here at the Courtyard, but also I have uh, a bit of an interest in Shakespeare. So what I'm going to do today uh, to round off our very special week of Shakespeare based activities, uh, we're going to do the Shakespeare Games, which is um, a chance for you to have a bit of fun um, and to just go a bit wild, so test your Shakespeare knowledge, and we'll just play some silly games as well, um, because I think that'll be pretty good fun. If you do want to let me know if you're watching, um, who's watching, uh, get involved with some of the answers, then by all means, write in the comments, um, and we'll have a bit of a chat in there as well. Um, throughout this session today, we're gonna do a scavenger hunt. We are gonna play Spot the Difference. Uh, we're gonna do an emoji quiz. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the things that are happening here at the courtyard, uh, as well as test your Shakespeare knowledge towards the end as well. But don't worry if you don't know all the answers, uh, it's purely just to have a little bit of fun. So we will uh, give it a couple of seconds, and um, we'll let as many people join as possible, and then we'll do a little bit of a warm up because it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it's a Friday, uh, we've had a very long week, um, so I think it's a good chance to, to get moving and uh, just do a little bit of, um, just warming up. Let's get ready for the, the day ahead, shall we? So let's play, good morning, um, a bit of Shakespeare Says. Now, if you are familiar with the game Simon Says, uh, it means that you have to do something as long as Simon says so. Very similar concept, except Shakespeare saying it instead. So if I say Shakespeare says, uh, touch your head, then you'll touch your head. But if I said, touch your shoulders, don't do it because Shakespeare hasn't said it. So we'll go, we'll, we'll, t we'll try, we'll see how we go, shall we? So Shakespeare says, clap your hands. <laughs> Shakespeare says, touch your nose. Shakespeare says, wiggle your arms. Touch your nose. Ah, you're not supposed to touch your nose. Shakespeare says, stand up tall. Stand up, up you get. And Shakespeare says, stretch as high as you can. You can't see me in the screen. Shakespeare says, touch the floor. Jog on the spot. No, don't jog on the spot. Uh, we'll do one more round and slide to the left. Uh, if you slid to the left, don't because Shakespeare's got to say it. Shakespeare says, do star jumps. Shakespeare says, sit on your chair or your floor, wherever you're watching. Uh, pat your knees. And then Shakespeare says, come back to where you started. Well done if you did all of that correctly. If you didn't, don't worry, it's all a bit of fun. It just gets us moving on a Friday morning, doesn't it? But talking of moving then, we are now going to do a scavenger hunt. So I'm going to ask you to find certain things and see if you can come up with the most interesting things uh, to find. So. Find something in your house or wherever you're watching which Shakespeare could write with. What do you think Shakespeare would, would write something with? And I want you to go and grab it and then bring it back to where you are. Because actually that's going to come in handy a little bit later. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Now, hopefully you've come back with something. Find something which Shakespeare might drink water out of. Yes, Jack, you're absolutely right. A pen is probably the, the best one on that last one. Uh, find something which Shakespeare might drink water out of. Now, I want you to find something that is the colour of a rose. If you find something that looks like a rose, maybe it is a rose, find something that is that colour. And there's a little clue behind me if you're paying attention. You need to find something in that colour. Hopefully you've got something there. Something I'll take red or white, because you can get white roses as well. Uh, find something that Shakespeare might read. He's a big fan of books, we all know that, but you need to find something he might read. Now, I'm very lucky, because I can just reach behind me and grab A Midsummer Night's Dream. So 
but maybe you've got your favourite book somewhere, maybe you're reading something at school at the moment. Now this is a bit of a, a tricky one and it requires a little bit of imagination and you can write in the comments if you want to as to what you found, but I want you to find something that is one of your favourite things where you are right now. So if you're in your bedroom or you're in your living room, you're somewhere at home, find something that is your favourite thing there and then let me know what it is in the comments if you want to. Or if you're at school at the moment or an activity club or anything like that, um, wherever you are, find something that is your favourite thing there. If you want to let me know what it is, that would be excellent because you might find that someone has the same thing as you. And then finally, I want you to hunt for something that Shakespeare might eat. What might Shakespeare eat? And it doesn't have to be from Shakespeare times because that would be quite, quite mouldy now if you were trying to eat something from 500 years ago. You might find something in wherever you are now that Shakespeare might eat. Might what I would have found if I had if I wasn't in this room is a probably a piece uh, an orange actually. I'm quite into oranges at the moment, so I would probably go for an orange. Weetabix, Jack. <laughs> yeah, why not? That would have all been around in Shakespeare's times. Maybe not as Weetabix, but it would all be there. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to play a game of Spot the Difference. So, as you can see, I've got lots of things around me. You can kind of see. Uh, if I, in fact, if I stand up for this one, here we go. I've got lots of things on this table here. So, we've got a shield. We've got some books. We have got a... We did have a shield and now it's fallen down. Uh, we've got a bowler hat, we've got a horse's head, and we've got some roses, we've got a hat just over here as well. Let me pick these books up. And we'll probably leave the, uh, the shield on the floor again. But also, I am not wearing a hat at the moment. I've got nothing on my head. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up the camera and I'm going to move something, or hide something, or change something. And it might be quite big, it might be quite small, uh, it might be something really super obvious, or it might be quite unnoticeable. But it's only going to be one thing each time. So, I'm going to cover the camera now, and then hopefully you can't see it. And I'm going to change it. Take this off. There is something different in that couple of seconds. And if you want to guess on the comments, absolutely fine. Or if you just want to play along where you are, that's absolutely fine as well. Now, it's something different, something that might be quite obvious, something it, you might not have noticed in the first place. But yes, I have put the bowler hat on. And it's a little bit big for me, but that's the one difference. So, in fact, if I put that back on, I'll cover the screen again, and I'm going to change something again. Now again, it might be really, really obvious, or it might be something quite small, but something else has changed now. And don't, it's not that I've taken the hat off, because that was going to happen anyway. There's something missing from around here now. And if you guessed it right, you'll know the roses disappeared. So I'm going to put them back and I will cover the camera again and we'll change something else.
once again, it might be really obvious, or it might be something really subtle that you didn't quite realise. So what is different now? What can you think that is, uh, it wasn't there before, maybe it's appeared, maybe something's disappeared, what do you think it could be? Yeah, you're absolutely right, it's this scarf, isn't it? In Swindon Town colours, my dad would be very happy with, uh, it's this red and white scarf. So, I'll cover it up again, and we'll have two more of these. Now there's something different about this room. I want you to, to guess what it is. I think this one might be a little bit tricky, but something has changed. Can you tell what it is? Because I have moved the shield away. I moved it off the table. If I put it back one more time, it's not going to stay up, is it? It's this table, it's very clean, it's very slippery. Right, I'll do one more thing and then we'll move on to the next. Something's different this time, and I wonder what it could be. It could be something very obvious, it might not be obvious at all. Uh, it might be something glaring at you in the face, maybe. And it's probably probably my favourite one. Yeah, that's absolutely right, I've got the horse now. And later on, that's how I'm going to get home this afternoon. I'm going to gallop home uh, once I've finished working today. So well done, if you got all of those right, give yourself a big clap or a big pat on the back. Um, well done. That was, some of those were easier than others. Some of them were quite difficult, weren't they? So if you did do quite well, amazing. Well done to you. We're going to move on to the, the next activity now, which is uh, our emoji quiz. Now, you are probably much more familiar with emojis than I am, but I have got the names of some of Shakespeare's plays in emoji form, and I want you to put it together and guess what the play is. I've got... Uh, five of these and this is number one what do you think that play could be now you've got a witch's hat you have got some swords you've got a crown and you've also got the scottish flag now that is probably the biggest clue if you know your shakespeare plays that's probably a big clue So you've got your witch's hat, your swords, your crown, and your Scottish flag. That is number one. Number two is this one. Now more emojis, but probably one of Shakespeare's most famous plays, certainly in modern times. You've got one house, You've got another house, it's a different house, even though they're very similar. You've got a heart, which might mean not just a heart itself, but what does that mean? Then you've got a bride, you've got some poison, and you've got a coffin, which could mean someone has died, and a broken heart. So this heart here, at the start, is all together, it's complete. And at the very end, it's broken. I wonder what that could mean. Don't forget, you've got two houses. What might live in a house? What, who have you got in your house? Okay, that's number two. Number three is this one. Now you've got a calendar. 
And that calendar is on the month of June. If you can see that, it's on the month of June, on the 21st. Then you've got some sunshine. You've got nighttime. And this person's asleep. Now that might not mean sleeping, it might mean something else. What do you do while you're asleep? What happens? So you've got your calendar on the month of June, on 21st of June. You've got some sunshine, you've got night time, and you've got sleeping. What could those mean? That's number three. Number four, now this one is quite difficult. You've got a snowman and a book. A snowman and a book. This is one of Shakespeare's plays. And it's not, I'll tell you, I'll give you a clue, it's not the snowman. It's got a snowman. What might, what season might you be in if you are building snowmen? And what's this? It's a story, it's a book. What could another name for a story be? That's, that's a big clue. How could we do that? That is number four. And then your final test on the emoji quiz is this one. Now this one's quite long, but you've got a coffin, you've got a bride, there's a crown, there's the palace or the kingdom potentially. You've got a ghost here, more poison and a dagger. What could this mean? What is this all about? You might recognise it in a different way, but it is still Shakespeare. So let's go back through the answers then, shall we? I think Joanna, you've got um, you've definitely got one of them. So number one was this. It's a witch's hat, got swords together. You've got a crown and you've got the Scottish flag. Well, the Scottish flag is the big clue because it's known as the Scottish play. And it's Macbeth. Now, I sh probably shouldn't say that in this place because apparently it's bad luck to say Macbeth if you're in a theatre. Now, I don't know why. I don't know what the, the superstition is, but that's why a lot of actors call it the Scottish play. This one. Now, you've got your two houses. Although they look very similar, there are differences between the two. And you've got a tale of, of love and heartbreak yeah, it's the most famous one probably. It's Romeo and Juliet. It's been made loads and loads of times by different people. Lots of films about it as well. This one, number three. June was the, the big giveaway. June and Sunshine was the big giveaway. And then Nighttime as well. And if you are a fan of Shakespeare's plays, you probably got that straight away. But it is a Midsummer Night's Dream because that person, as well as being asleep, they're also dreaming as well. Number four. You've got a snowman and you've got a book. Now, it could be another name for us, a book or a story. And what do you do in, when you're building snowmen? What season is it? It's a winter's tale. So another name for a story could be a tale and you build snowmen in the winter. So a winter's tale. And this final one, which is probably the most, most difficult, is Hamlet. Hamlet's very famous for a certain line, which we'll come to a little bit later. But that was number five. If you got any of those, I applaud you because when I first looked at them, I didn't have a clue. I had to ask for the answers. So well done to you if you got that. Now, for the next activity we're going to do, you're going to need some paper and something to write with. So if you, uh, if you took part in the scavenger hunt and you got yourself a pen or a pencil, um, brilliant. Keep that and keep uh, some paper with you to write out something for the next game. So while you sort yourself out and, and sort that, it's a good time to talk about our Bard at the Yard events. Now, every year, the Courtyard Education team deliver some exciting and engaging sessions in your school. Uh, they look at stories, characters, language, the creativity uh, and performance skills and confidence with Shakespeare and, and Shakespeare's work, basically. You then get to experience a day here at the Courtyard, including a backstage tour, arts activities. Um, the highlight is that you get to perform on our main stage as well. It's, if you've never been on the stage before, it's an amazing experience. Um, and it's, it's super cool as well. So keep an eye on our website 
or get your grown-up to keep an eye on it. It's courtyard.org.uk. Uh, it's called Bard at the Yard. We do those every year, and obviously we haven't been able to do it properly for the last year, uh, but we're really excited to do it again in the next year. So the next activity we're going to do is we're going to play a game of Shakespeare true or false. Now I'm going to give you some um, phrases or some, some statements and I want you to tell me if they're true or false or I want you to guess if they're true or false. Um, there are 20 of them. So it's literally just a true or, true or false and if you haven't got a clue then that's absolutely fine. I wouldn't either to be honest. Um, so just guess. It's a 50-50, nothing to lose. And it's all just a bit of fun as well, isn't it? So, number one, Shakespeare invented the phrase, catch a cold. Is that true or is it false? Catch a cold. Number two, Shakespeare invented the phrase, knock, knock, who's there? He invented the phrase, knock, knock, who's there? Number three, he invented the phrase, my own flesh and blood. Shakespeare invented the phrase, my own flesh and blood. Is that true or is it false? Number four, Shakespeare invented the phrase, what the dickens? That's a really fun phrase to say. Shakespeare invented the phrase, what the dickens? And that is number four. Is that true or false? Number five on this, Shakespeare invented the phrase, there's no such thing. Now you... A lot of people say that quite a lot, but did Shakespeare invent it? Is that true or false? Number six, my parents always used to say this to me when I was younger. Eaten out of house and home, because I always used to eat them out of house and home. I was very hungry, as you could probably tell. Did Shakespeare invent that? Is that true or is it false? Number seven, Shakespeare invented the phrase, all of a sudden. Now again, these are words and phrases that are really popular but did Shakespeare invent them? Is that true or false? All of a sudden. Number eight, Shakespeare invented the word swagger. Shakespeare invented the word swagger. True or false? Now, number nine, Shakespeare has a curse on his grave. There was a curse placed on Shakespeare's grave. Is that true or is it false? Uh, whatever it is, it sounds spooky. Uh, number 10, Shakespeare's shortest play is 1,770 lines long. True or false, his shortest play is 1,770 lines long. Number 11, Shakespeare's longest play would take over four hours to perform. That's a long time, isn't it? Is that true or is it false? Shakespeare's longest play would take over four hours to perform. You would hope there'd be a break in the middle, surely. Is that true or false? Uh, number 12, Shakespeare didn't publish any of his plays. He didn't publish any of his plays. Now we all know Shakespeare plays, but is that true or is it false? Number 13, Shakespeare's works were made into movies in 25 countries so far. Shakespeare's works have been made into movies by 25 countries. Is that true or is it false? Number 14, Shakespeare's name has been spelt 80 different ways. Now, I, I'm constantly getting people spelling my name wrong because I spell it in a certain way. And, well, is it true or is it false that Shakespeare's name has been spelt 80 different ways? Uh, number 15, in Shakespeare's time, actors often got apples or pears chucked at them if they were rubbish. So if they gave a rubbish performance, would people throw apples and pears at them? Is that true or is it false? Number 16, in Shakespeare's time, there were no females allowed on stage. There was no women or ladies allowed on stage. It was illegal. So all the female parts were played by men. Is that true or is it false? So women weren't allowed on stage. It was illegal. Is that true? And so the, the parts were played by men. Is that true or is it false? I mean, it's quite, it's quite extreme, isn't it, when you think about it? Number 17. Shakespeare's son was called Hamnet. Was Shakespeare's son named Hamnet? True or false? Uh, 
Number 18, Shakespeare's father once had a job to test different beers. Shakespeare's father was a beer tester. Is that true or is it false? Number 19, there's a lot known about Shakespeare's life, but between 1585 and 1592, there's nothing known about Shakespeare's life or his career. So there's nothing known about Shakespeare's life or career between 1585 and 1592. Is that true or is it false? And the final one, number 20, Shakespeare's works have been translated into many, many, many different languages and dialects. But one of the strangest translations is Klingon from Star Trek. Have Shakespeare's works been translated into Klingon? Is that true or is it false? So you've got 20 of those there. So you should have either true or false in all of those. How well do you think you did? Some of them were quite difficult, weren't they? Well, actually, it's a bit of a trick because they're all true. Every single one of those facts is completely true, including the one where women weren't allowed on stage. It was illegal in those times. And you think about the amazing performers we've got now, how weird would it be? It would be really strange, wouldn't it? And there are some productions of Shakespeare's plays um, that are done with all male cast as well, uh, with the men playing the female roles. Um, it's, it's interesting, it's a very interesting part of history, um, but thankfully it's moved on since then, hasn't it? Uh, so we'll move on to our final game now. And this is generic uh, Shakespeare knowledge. So there could be some modern things in there, there could be some real, um, real proper detailed Shakespeare things. Uh, but again, it's just a bit of fun. Test your knowledge, see how much you've learned through this week with all of our Shakespeare activities. And if you want to write them down, absolutely fine, or just play along wherever you are. So number one, what play is the phrase to be or not to be? That is the question. What play is that from? To be or not to be, that is the question. What play did that come from? Question number two, how many plays did William Shakespeare write? How many plays did he write? Obviously he wrote loads of different things, but how many plays were there? And I'll give you a clue, it's more than 30, but under 50. Question number three, how many sonnets did Shakespeare write? So we're not talking about plays now, how many sonnets did he write? Question number four, what date was William Shakespeare born on? What was his birthday? Don't worry about the year. If you, do, if, you, if you can't guess the year, that's absolutely fine. But what date do you think Shakespeare was born on? Question number five, what is the name of the 10th Doctor in Doctor Who, who is very well known for his Shakespeare acting? What is the name of the 10th Doctor from Doctor Who, who is really, really well known for being in Shakespeare productions. Question number six, The Lion King is based on which Shakespeare play? The Lion King is based on which Shakespeare play? Now it's not called The Lion King in Shakespeare's plays, but the story is very, very similar. Number seven, in Romeo and Juliet, what are the name of the two houses? Do you remember when we saw the emoji quiz, there were two houses? Or families, they would be called as well. What are those family names in Romeo and Juliet? They were always arguing with each other, even though they were quite similar. Number eight, in the middle of a season in the year, you might have a dream in the night. What season would that be? If you th again, think back to the emoji quiz. If you had a dream in the night, what season would you be in? Number nine, we know that Shakespeare invented lots of words and we still use them today. They're still really, really popular and you might not realise it, but how many is Shakespeare credited 
with inventing. And I'll, I'll help you to the nearest thousand. So don't worry about lots of numbers. How many thousands of words did Shakespeare invent? And your final question today, number 10. What town in England was Shakespeare born? So you should already have guessed his birth date, but where? Where was he born? It's quite famous now, and every summer, loads and loads of people go down to that town. And that's it, that's your quiz. So I'll go through the answers now and test how you did. If you did really well, amazing, big thumbs up. If you did middle of the road, bah, that's absolutely fine. If you didn't do very well, at least we learned something. So question number one, to be or not to be? That is the question. Where did that come from? It was from Hamlet. Uh, number two, how many plays did William Shakespeare write? He wrote 37 in total. And bearing in mind, I can barely write my own name. That's quite impressive. Uh, number three, how many sonnets did he write? He wrote 154 sonnets. Uh, number four, the date that William Shakespeare was born on was the 23rd of April. And interestingly, he also died on that same date as well. Not the same year, because otherwise we wouldn't have had 37 plays and 154 sonnets. But he also died on his birthday on the 23rd of April. Uh, the name of the 10th Doctor, who's really, really well known for being in Shakespeare plays, was David Tennant. He's probably my favourite Doctor as well. Uh, number six, The Lion King is based on which Shakespeare play? It's based on Hamlet. So if you watch Lion King, um, it's a brilliant film, both the original animated one and the newer one. Um, it's actually the story of Hamlet. Number seven, in Romeo and Juliet, what are the names of the two houses or two families? They're the Montagues and the Capulets. Number eight, in the middle of a season in the year, you might have a dream in the night. What season would that be? Summer, of course, a midsummer night dream. Number nine, Shakespeare was well known for inventing lots of words that we use today, but how many did he invent? He invented 3,000 words. That's a lot, isn't it? And we still use loads of them today, and they're really, really popular. So he invented 3,000 words. And number 10, what town in England was Shakespeare born? He was born in Stratford-upon-Avon. Now, it's not that far away from Hereford, actually. Um, and it's a really interesting place. You can go and have a look around his house and everything like that. Um, Stratford-upon-Avon. It's really, really worth going. When we're able to, when you can, when you can get there, definitely worth having a look at that. So finally then, we hope you have enjoyed this week of Shakespeare activities and that you've learned something as well. Maybe you've been introduced to, to Shakespeare for the first time. Maybe you were a Shakespeare boffin and you knew all the stuff that there was to know and you've just had a bit of fun as well. Well, that's amazing. I've definitely learned something just doing this. And also a massive thank you to all of our practitioners uh, who have run sessions. They've given up their time to run sessions for us. And a massive thank you to you for taking part as well. It's amazing to get you involved. Uh, before I go, I just wanted to tell you about something new here that's happening at the Courtyard. It's called Kid Lit. Um, it's the Courtyard's new children's literacy project supporting our community uh, in promoting literacy, creative writing, writing resilience. Um, obviously, we've had a really strange year for education in the last year, haven't we? So this is just to, to kind of support all that stuff. Um, the project includes a 500 word short story writing competition for children between the ages of five and 12. So there are two age categories. There's five to eight and nine to 12. And you can write a short story uh, of no more than 500 words and put into this competition. They can be about anything. They could be about pirates, dinosaurs, Doctor Who, superheroes, nurses, secret agents. The list, honestly, is endless. It's as, it's as long as your imagination, um, but it must be fictional. So it can't be a real life story. It's got to be a, a made up story, your own made up story, but it could be about any subject at all. Uh, all entrants must write an original story, no more than 500 words, as I said, and submit it using our form on the website. We've got it all on the website for you. Um, they'll then be judged on their enjoy enjoyment rather than punctuation, grammar and spelling. So don't worry about any of all that. Just have fun with it um, and, and we'll judge it based on that, basically. Um, it's open for submissions. The deadline is Monday the 14th of June at 8 o'clock in the evening. So you've got some time to get pen to paper, get thinking about it, um, get it as good as you can. 
In terms of conditions, they're on our website. It's on the KidLit page. Um, so get your grown-up to have a read of it on there, courtyard.org.uk. Search for KidLit, um, all the terms and conditions, and also the, the entry form is on there as well. Um, KidLit 2021, it'll conclude on National Writing Day on the 23rd of June. Winners will be announced live here on the Courtyard's Facebook page um, by really successful authors, Emma Reed and Simon James Green as well. We're really lucky to have them to judge it. Um, they will then be hosting free online workshops via Facebook Live at 10 a.m. that day as well uh, by Emma, uh, Emma Reed. She's the author of Milton the Mighty. Um, and then one o'clock that afternoon on the 23rd of June, uh, Simon James Green, he's the author of The Life of Riley, um, which is it's amazing. It's really good fun. Definitely get involved if you can. All the details are on our website site and um, get your grown-up to have a look at it as well with you um, courtyard.org.uk thank you very much for joining in today it's been a pleasure um, we'll hopefully see you in the building here very very soon um, but for everything else keep an eye on our facebook page keep an eye on the website and um, we'll have all of our information all of our resources on there thank you very much have a lovely rest of your friday uh, and we'll see you soon bye bye